Good evening. My name is Diana Arismendi, and I'm a youth minister here in the diocese. I've been working in ministry now for about 10 years, and it's been very challenging, but very rewarding at the same time. And I remember the last time, what, the first time I was in a room full of seminarians was when I was in college. I, was at, I studied at Loyola University, and my junior year I had the privilege of taking a class with Father Presta, who I believe was your speaker last month. He had a Mariology class that semester, and I, took, I wanted to take it. I wanted to learn more about Mary. And some of my girlfriends wanted to be part of that class. We were doing same minors and whatnot, but their schedule didn't work out, so I ended up being the only girl in the class. It was very awkward at first, but it was great. By the end of the semester, um, the, the friendship that grew with the seminarians at the time, many of who are priests now, was really great, and uh, I'm very, very glad I took part of that class, as uncomfortable and awkward it, it was at the beginning. So I'm glad to be here with you and be able to pray together and um, reflect on the virtues of St. Joseph specifically as St. Joseph's virtue as a just, just man. As I was praying and reflecting on St. Joseph and what I would share with you all, I realized that in the years that I've been doing ministry and the many conferences I've taken teens to, a lot of times every, teens and young women are invited to look to St. Joseph as their model and the one to pray for for a good spouse or the model of um, who you should become as a young man. But there are so many virtues and so many things that we can learn about St. Joseph that I was very um, struck as I was praying. And this year of St. Joseph that Pope Francis has gifted us with has truly been a gift as we learn more of St. Joseph, because scripture, we don't know much of St. Joseph from scripture, but there's so many things that we do know of St. Joseph as we look a little deeper and kind of pray and the things that the Holy Spirit has enlightened us with. But St. Joseph, um, his character and who he is is very unique. He was betrothed to Mary, and upon hearing that, he, that Mary was pregnant, I'm, I'm thinking many things crossed his mind. I, I know that if I were in a situation similar to what Joseph was, many things would go through my mind. And his commitment to Mary was very sacred. He had made binding vows, and they were going to live together. And I'm sure he had this beautiful life ahead of them planned. In the eyes of society, though, Mary being pregnant meant that she, would, she had committed adultery, right? And that sin was punishable by death, by stoning. In the Gospel of Matthew, we hear that Joseph was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose Mary to shame. So he decided to divorce her quietly. So he did not want to make a big deal. He wanted no eyes on them. He wanted everything to happen quietly because he didn't want to expose her. Joseph was a man of strong faith, but also respected the law. But he did not want to put Mary in a position where she would be shamed and judged in public. In the Gospel of Matthew, we also hear that an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and told him that Mary had conceived a child by the power of the Holy Spirit. So not at all what Joseph might have thought at the beginning. And to not be afraid and to take Mary into his home. In doing so, Joseph demonstrates his deep faith, his trust and his obedience by doing, it, by doing as he was told. He accepts Mary as his wife and thus becomes the adoptive father of Jesus. He does not hesitate, he does not question, and he does not entertain any of the thought, thoughts of what others might think uh, will say, or will say. He simply obeys out of love. In Patris Corde, Pope Francis tells us that Joseph accepted Mary unconditionally. He trusted in the angel's words. The nobility of Joseph's heart is such that what he learned from the law he made dependent on charity. Today in our world, where psychological, verbal, and physical violence towards women is so evident, Joseph appears as a figure of a respectful and sensitive man. Even though he does not understand the bigger picture, he makes a decision to protect Mary's good name, her dignity, and her life. In his hesitation about how best to act, God helps him by enlightening his, ju his judgment. 
So as I think of St. Joseph as a just man, I couldn't help but also thinking how jo Joseph is a great example of pastoral care for us. Joseph breaks all the society's norms and lets his actions be driven by charity and trust of God. His actions manifest an unconditional love towards God, Mary, and his adoptive son, Jesus. In all of this, Joseph acknowledges Mary's dignity and reminds us that even though the law is the law and should be respected, the common good, a person's dignity, and God's love is above all. So many times in ministry, we think that things are black and white, and they're not. So I, I think of St. Joseph as that example and that model of the times where we are tempted to think that things are black and white, but they're not. Many times we have to dig, dig deeper into our conversations and learn about the situations in order to make a good pastoral decision in the different um, scenarios we can be a part of. Again, in Patris Cordy, Pope Francis says that Joseph's attitude encourages to accept and welcome others as they are, without exception. So aside from what we read in scripture, we know very little of St. Joseph, like I said, but we do know the man who Jesus became. And I like to think that we learn about people and we know who they are a little when we look at their family and who they are and how they grew up. And I've worked with many children and teens in the years, and I, I have two, niece, two nephews and a niece, so I know um, how well people can, um, and how much ch children can pick up from, from their parents and their surroundings. And to me, it's fascinating when I meet parents after meeting their children, because many times I can say, oh, no wonder this child is very sweet. I see they take from their mom or this child has really challenged me, and I can see where that's coming from after meeting their parents. And I see it with my nephews and my niece. Even though they're small and little, there's many different things that I see that they're picking up from their parents. Actions and behaviors that must be corrected when they're little, but other things we see that they're growing and learning that are, are in the good, um, they're in the good walk. And I'm certain that if you were to meet my parents, and after, if we spend more time together, I'm certain that you would see a lot of what I've taken from my parents. So that leads me to believe that everything we know about Jesus is a reflection of who St. Joseph was. What we know about Jesus is that Jesus, during his public years of ministry, he upholds the dignity of others. He breaks many norms in the same way that Joseph did. But what's incredible about Jesus, and I'm always reminded of, is that he empowers, he accepts, he heals, and he ministers to those on the margins, men and women alike. In the same way that Joseph protects Mary, Jesus defends the woman caught in adultery. He also defends the sinful woman and allows her to anoint his feet for perfume. And even on the cross, Jesus makes sure that his mother Mary is taken care of by entrusting her to John. So this respect for women, Jesus very clearly learned from Joseph. So Jesus learned to be a just man and a man of great pastoral care, not only because he is the son of God, but also by the example of St. Joseph. Growing up, I remember my parents always encouraged me and my siblings and they always made sure we knew the things they noticed in us that were so good, our gifts and our talents, and of course, the things that weren't right. And I remember that they would always tell us that they wanted us to go to college one day. I am the oldest of five, and I have two brothers and two sisters. And when he was young, my dad always dreamed of becoming a lawyer, and my mom always wanted to be a nurse but life's hardships and their desire for a better life led them to come to the United States soon after I was born. Now, I grew up, I'm Mexican, and in my culture, this machista mindset is very prevalent. This idea that men are to be dominant and women are submissive and obedient, and obedient in a way that, not how we learn from Mary in the, as a virtue, but more of 
you just do what you're told in a very demeaning manner. But this is not what I experienced in my home. That was far from it. My dad and my mom always made sure that we knew and we were empowered and we were always encouraged to do the things that we, that we wanted to do. And I remember when I was in high school, uh, my dad and my mom would probably share with our friends and family how right after college, right after high school, I would go on to college only to be met with negative comments. Things such as, why even bother? One day she'll get married and you will have wasted your money. Her degree will, not, will be pointless. And as discouraging as these comments were, my parents worked harder and harder to make sure that my siblings, both my brothers and my sisters, received a good de education equally. And after many years of sacrifice and many years of hard labor, um, they were able to put five of us through college. And there's a range of gifts and talents and all of that in our family. So I'm very grateful for that, for that the fact that my parents were able to break those norms that we kind of grew up with and were able to say, no, there's good and there's a lot that they can offer and we will encourage them and empower them. And in, my, in the many years of ministry that I've, that I've worked, I've met many priests and deacons and seminarians who have also encouraged me in my journey. There have been times that have been difficult, I'll admit, but there are, there's, I can name many people who have encouraged me in my journey as a lay woman in our church. Especially in a time when many people question exactly what is the role of a woman in the church. And let me tell you that men and women, we complement each other very well. And I'm sure that there's many gifts that you as future priests will be able to give the church and us women who are present and ministering to the church can also assist you with. And I've had many good men in my life remind me of that in my vocation. So in taking Mary in after finding out that she was pregnant, Joseph empowers her and validates her vocation as mother of God. Through his actions, Jesus validates and empowers the women he encounters throughout his ministry. And through their actions, my parents and the priests, seminarians, and friends that I've met along the way have validated and empowered me in my vocation and in the work that I do. So as you continue to discern your call to the priesthood, I invite you to reflect in the ways in which God is calling you to empower, validate, and stand up for the people you will be serving. Like I said, Working in ministry is not always black and white, and you will be met with many decisions. Um, and you, in, the, in the people that you minister, you'll encounter many situations that might not make sense, the decisions that you will make. But in all that you do, you will be called to defend the dignity with love and compassion of those you encounter. Most of you at one point will be pastors, or perhaps there's a future bishop sitting here with us. So how will you defend the dignity and minister to the people in your care, the staff, your parishioners? And how will you empower them to discover their gifts and their talents? Joseph knew that his call to be the adoptive son of Jesus was a higher purpose that he did not understand. And he knew and he, and he validated that in Mary as the mother of God. He knew that her purpose, that her gift to the church would be far greater than what could be imagined. So in that, he, he exalted and he validated her gift. So how will you as future priests or perhaps future husbands, if you, if you discern that your vocation is not one to the priesthood, how will you empower the people in your care to discover their gifts and their talents and do what is right and, and share those gifts with the church? How will you defend the dignity of the people you meet of different cultural backgrounds? Perhaps what I shared earlier of my upbringing you might not have known unless we had a conversation. So many times we cannot make decisions, pastoral decisions, without engaging in conversations in that relational ministry that we can do. And Jesus, we know, took that time to meet the people he ministered to. There was something that he sensed and something that he knew that led him to take the actions and empower the people he met, heal the sick, 
without even saying a word? And how will you defend the dignity and remind men and women alike of God's love for them, especially in a time when many people question God's love for them? In the work that I do with teens, um, I'm, I'm always challenged in the way that I remind people how much they are loved. Teens really want that affirmation as much as they try to shy away from us. And we're constantly called to remind them that there's so much that they can offer. How will you imitate St. Joseph's virtues as you learn to be priests and minister to God's, God's church? This gift that we've received of this year of St. Joseph is certainly an invitation to reflect more on who St. Joseph is for each of us. And as I was praying and as I continue to learn more about St. Joseph, I am reminded that Joseph was a man, a just man, a man of justice, a man of pastoral care. And that is reflective on the person who Jesus is. So know that as we continue this year and as we start to wrap up this year of St. Joseph, know that many people are praying for you. I'll be praying for you. And this call to the priesthood that you are all discerning will be a great gift to the church. So I pray and hope that in all that you do, that you will be men of great, of justice, men of just men, men of great discernment, and men who will really um, take this pastoral sensitivity and pastoral care to heart. Because the church really needs that in this moment. And I am confident that all of you will be able to share that with the people that you minister. St. Joseph, pray for us.